Hey, welcome guys to CCXRC. Today on the show, we're gonna show you how to install these trail axles here for the LMT. These are 7075 aluminum. They are billet and they should be extra beefy for these things. So let's go ahead and do it. Today, we're gonna be looking at the trail axles. Uh, for the LMT. These are 7075 billet aluminum. So basically they take a solid piece uh, and they carve it out of that. And it is really, really nice looking um, what they've done here. It only has one opening unlike the uh, LMT axle, which these two side plates come off as well. So now all we really do is open up the diff. And then of course you've got your two ends. And this can be used for a front or rear, as you'll see, um, just by changing out these outer two pieces right here and uh, I've got basically I opened this one to do some pictures with but I do have the box right here that I received all of this in from Triel and uh, when I ordered this I had to order it from them uh, shipped from China but there's a few people that are going to be carrying them here in the U.S. so you can get them in a U.S. store like um, I know that J.E.R. said he's going to be carrying them but also uh, Crawford Performance Engineering out of New York. So Florida, New York, two East Coast guys will have some available to order from in the US. They do come with bearings, screws. Looks like there might be a shim in here as well. And uh, yeah, so we'll get to this uh, and figuring it out. But here's what it actually comes like when you get it right here. You get one bag everything is bagged inside of it. So it's actually really nice how they've done it. Um, and I did go ahead and order a few extra things. I got some stickers with it and I ordered another um, steering block, I guess, as well. That way they can call it the C-Hub spindle carrier. So I ordered this so I could do four wheel steer and getting steering in the rear. So um, that's an extra piece. This is gonna be the front axles in here. I unpacked the easier one for the pictures, which was the rear. And so we're gonna assemble these. Basically we have to use all the inside guts of the LMT ones and uh, then we'll be good to go. So uh, before we do anything, we do have to take the rear axle off of the LMT, which I have right over there and we'll get to it. All right, wheels are off. Now we just have to remove the axle itself. So we'll be taking off these lower links. We'll take off the shocks, sway bars, upper links, and we'll have it in our hand. It's not too bad, especially if you have a drill driver and some of these nice tips from uh, MIP. Alrighty guys, so here it is. The axle is off, not very difficult to get off. Actually very easy to access things in these axles. These do have the JER axle braces. Sorry, so we're gonna keep on moving forward with this thing. We waited, it was 11.64 ounces, I believe it was. We wanna get this stuff off of here, compare it to what it's gonna be in the trio housing. But we gotta get into all this stuff here. Now, the way that these ones work, these side pieces actually, with this off, once we get this unscrewed, these will also come off as well, and everything will just kind of come out, fall out of here. Um, so I'll start by taking, yeah, we'll take the hexes off, which are 2.5, which is awesome, because these are 17 millimeter hexes. They're monster truck wheels, we deserve big hexes. We got them. Now that we've got these apart, we do have to take um, the ends off of the axles here to be able to get the drive shafts out. There's four screws, they're 1.5 millimeter. We'll do it on both sides. Do we get lazy Tony today or do we get not as lazy Tony today? Hmm. How much cleaning on this do I wanna do? All right, so we're just gonna do a basic clean down, get these parts out. Smooth, it's got some grease on it still, it's a little dirty. We'll just give it a quick clean down. All right, 
cool. So axle is apart, done. Don't think we need any bearings from it, so it just goes to the side. And we get ready to assemble the new one. Okay, so here is the trail axle. Regardless of front or rear, it doesn't matter. This is the main bulk of it. We're gonna go ahead and take off these two screws here, four screws, get our uh, diff case open. These are 2.5 millimeter. Go. All right, so now we have it open. You can see this little notch in here. That is gonna prevent the diff from going in the wrong way. The side with the gear will only fit on this side over here. So we go ahead and set this up here. And I'm gonna go ahead and use this premium white by Protec. And we're just gonna put a little bit of it around here. All right, and like I said, it'll only fit one way, making sure that your bearings seat themselves properly on here, like so. So this part is done. Now we're gonna move over to this part of the casing. There are gonna be some bearings that we're gonna install right here. And these, I do use the Utter Butter on for the bearings. It's kind of a waterproof grease. It's kind of put on, I'm gonna actually work on both sides of it, try and get it uh, so it'll slide in here. The hardest part of this is actually getting it to seat all the way in there. It has to go in quite far. That looks like it still has just a littlest bit. If you don't get it seated all the way in there, it will um, it will cause you some issues later down the road when your gear mesh uh, is too tight. So I'm gonna go with that for now. Do the other one really quick. Dang. Go ahead and put some utter butter on here. Gonna do the outsides, hoping to help it slide in here a little easier because these are tight. I push it down on the table. Let's see if I can get a little help that way. That's nice and flush now. Still not sure about this inner one. So what we're gonna go ahead and do is take our pinion. Also just put a little bit on this as well. But we'll push this in here and we'll just try and push on that. See if we can't get it to seat the rest of the way in just in case it's not all the way. And that seems to be all the way in there. So what we'll do is we're gonna set it on here. Let's see if this will seat in here. There it goes. Doesn't feel too bad. All right, so there you go. It does come with some shims that you could use if you need them. This doesn't feel like it needs them. There isn't a whole lot of play. So we're gonna go ahead and call it good. So we'll set this back up here for a second. What we're gonna do next is get our blue thread lock. And put a little dab on each one of these screws. As we put them in here, we're going metal into metal. It'll just help it from uh, loosening up. On the bearings, I am going to use the Utter Butter. Just get it right on my fingers. I don't care. It's a nice snug fit, that's for sure. I feel like I'm opening little candies. Everything's so pre-packaged nicely. Each, each individual bearing is cared for with such delicacy and grace and then I open it up and I don't care I'm just gonna use this to ram it in there that seated it feels pretty good pretty good in there all right I'll do that for the other one it's super smooth feeling feels real good we put one end on, we'll show you that process, it's real easy. You do it to both sides and then you add your hex at the end. Uh, basically, you're gonna take one of your drive shafts here. It's 
it's going to slide in. You got to find where it actually sits into that drive, into the diff. And you can see it when you get it because it'll start spinning that diff. So that's now set. You're going to grab your end and the trio logo should face out to the back where all the other trio logos are. And you're going to line up. Oh, we lost it. Once you get it, make sure you keep this facing upward so it doesn't slide out. And you're just going to go ahead and line this guy up here. And as you do that, you'll line up this. It's a square shape, so it only will fit uh, four different ways. But you want it the way that has the trio logo to the back, which will actually, when you look at it here, it makes the axles curve in. It puts a little toe on it. Um, and so you'll know it's going in if it's going towards where your out drive is for your uh, drive shaft coming out of your diff. So we're going to screw this in with the uh, four, with the two millimeter hexes that are supplied and uh, we'll be done with this axle. Bam. All right. So both ends are on. All we have left to do is add our hex. It can only fit on one way. You should not be able to mess this up. So see if you can, it'll be fun. Uh, but the larger side opening here is gonna go over. And then you just gotta line up the holes here. You might have to pull out on the axle a little bit to make sure that the holes line up. I'm gonna put some thread lock onto the grub screw and go fishing. So not me, there it goes. Just need a more drill power. All right, rear axle is done. We're gonna go ahead and weigh it, see how much it weighs. I probably have like three ounces of grease on the exterior of the case. So we'll try and get some of that off of here. So this one is 14.67 for the rear. So that is about three ounces more than the stock axle. Man, is it beefy. This thing is going to be spectacular. So we're going to go ahead and reinstall it on the truck and uh, get to the front axle. Now this process is the same for both axles up to this point. We have the whole front assembly still assembled right here. Basically, we'll turn this around like so. We do need to get these out. Everything is really nice and individually wrapped. If you look really closely, it has a little R marking that it is the right side. All right. So unlike the rear, this logo is actually going to be facing inward. So our front right one is actually going to go, if you have your axle sitting upright, so your circle is going to mount on top. This is the front of the vehicle, so the right side would be here from the driver. If you're over here, driver, this would be driver's right side. And these notches come to the inside as your stopping points. And I could just verify that by looking at this one, because I still have this truck together. This is the right, and so if I flip this upside down like this is sitting, it matches screws out of the bag. We're going to thread lock these as well and put them in place. All right, so here we come to the steering link and the universal joints for the front axles. Basically, we're just going to go ahead and install this. Looking at which side is going to be up is this. I'm going to match that with which side is up on the front here. And we're going to put these in and try to line them up internally you can actually do it without removing them until you find there it is so all i did was slide these in and then you got to make sure that you find that cup drive cup and you're good to go so if you find like i just did that you were still rubbing a little bit there the gears weren't going super smooth. 
and I didn't have the bearing seated all the way, all I did was took a wrench right through the, the out drive here on the pinion, like so, and I literally just pulled on it until that bearing seated and I felt it move and now smooth as butter. Those bearings are tough to get in there, but we got it. So now what we're gonna need are um, the king pins are gonna drop into these and we got the screws that hold them in place from the side. I have ordered a bunch of these because I was losing them in my initial runs. So I'm gonna go ahead and just see what happens here and install some new ones. So I'm actually gonna remove the screws that came with it and just put in all new ones as well. The problem is I don't feel like they bite enough into the kingpin. So how it works is got this hole here, this kingpin is notched there at the top that the screw is supposed to sit in. So when you put this in place, then from the side you put in your screw, it should, in theory, hold that in place. The problem is I've been having it back out and these are backing out. That feels pretty tight though. I'm trying with my knife to get under here and pry it up and it's pretty good. So hopefully we got it working nice and tight now. So you have these on top and bottom on both sides. Okay, I can feel that bite down now. All right, there we go. At this point, we're gonna install our mount for our servo it's going to sit right on top of here and then we'll install our servo and our servo saver and i'm going to deviate from the plan on this one a little bit so you'll watch and see what i do so there's a baggie of screws here it does have these long long screws as you can see here and these will be used to mount this so two long ones will go on the sides the longer of the three, there's two of them, and there's one shorter one that'll go in the front. So again, we're gonna add a little thread lock since it's gonna be going into the metal. Go right in through here, down into the axle. They're a different length than the, than the ones that were stock. All right. Now I'm gonna go ahead and install my Reef's Raw servo on this one. Gonna finally change it up. I was running the stock servo and servo saver on the son of a digger, but now we're gonna run the Reef Raw on this one when we switch it out. We're gonna make this thing a little bit more powerful and durable. So normally it would sit like this and it'd go over to here. What I'm gonna be doing is flipping mine like so, upside down, and it'll line up perfectly going to this side. So when I centered this servo, this would have been center up, and I just put my servo horn on upside down. I still get the same amount of throw, but I'm actually running the servo saver out to this outer side and uh, forego using the normal place. So that's the plan here. So I did have to change out this, I believe. I put a longer screw in here. We go right over this. And you'll actually see the servo saver is pretty much straight up and down. This couldn't be a better fit. And it's my favorite servo saver, so I'm super excited. Using my favorite servo saver and favorite servo on these beautiful tree axles, couldn't get better. There it is. Now we just have to bolt it back up to the truck. Gonna do our shocks, lower links, upper links, and our sway bars, and we'll be back up and running. 
All right, guys, so that is it. The axles are installed up front here with the Reefs Raw 500, along with the Freestyle RC Servo Saver. Still running the stock tires on it. It is heavy. Definitely I'm gonna wanna change these tires out, I think, to gain back some of the weight that I added with these axles, because it's a beast of a truck. You can see it hitting down on the table. But the axles, man, do they look clean. Good lines on them, trail. They look solid. The truck itself feels like a tank and uh, all that weight's just gonna probably take off the rest of the nose here. So um, yeah. Anyway guys, last thing left for me to do is give it a bash for you. Let me know what you think. Are these worth the money? Will they hold up? That's yet to be seen. I did go ahead and bind up my rugged. I should also point out with my rugged, I've gone ahead and taken off the little bar here ground it down so I can put my camera clamp on there. I was just getting tired of it kind of mashing down on here. Easy enough, hit it with the Dremel, ground it down nice and smooth. It gives me a nice place to uh, mount up my GoPro or my phone and uh, makes it much more useful for me, especially one-handed driving, all that, filming, good to go. But um, yeah, this thing's ready guys. Let's get it out there and I will give it a bash for you in the next couple days.